please hit subscribe. This problem appears at the qualifying examinations for applicants for Japanese government or MEC scholarships 2018. There are two mathematics exams, one for social sciences mathematics A and another for natural sciences mathematics B. This problem is from the 2018 mathematics B questionnaire. The answer key and original questions are linked in the description. Problem 3 of 1. Let A, B be constants. If the polynomial x to the fourth plus ax cubed plus ax squared plus bx minus 6 is divisible by x minus 1 squared, then a equals blank and b equals blank. A few ideas to remember when solving this problem. First is that if we say that a polynomial function g of x is a factor of another polynomial function f of x, we can actually write it as follows, f of x equals some other polynomial times g of x. And we can also say that the remainder is zero when we divide f of x by g of x. That's what we mean by g of x is a factor of f of x. And if it's a factor of f of x, and if we know that some constant a is a root of g of x. Root of g of x means that if you substitute it at x, so g of a, you should get zero. If this is the case, then if we substitute a to f of x, we also get zero. And that's simply because if you substitute a here, a, 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 you get q of a, g of a, but because we, we already know that g of a is zero, then this whole expression here goes to zero. For convenience, let us define some functions f of x and g of x. Let us define the given, this expression here, as our f of x. And let us define this divisor, this factor, to be g of x. And now we are asked to find a and b. Now we have two unknowns, so we require two equations to solve for A and B. And I will show you two methods to do this, to find these two equations. So the first method is the standard method, and that is without using calculus. So if you do not know calculus, then you can still use this method. And the other method is using calculus. And this is one of the methods that I advocate for this problem because it's easier. Normally, I wouldn't use calculus until necessary, but in this problem, calculus makes things easier. The standard method without calculus uses this fact that the remainder is zero when we divide f of x by g of x, that is, if g of x is a factor. So that's what we do. We just use this equation, zero equals the remainder when we do the division. Now, here, this one is just this, the given, and the denominator is just given. So we just expanded the denominator into this. Now, I'm not going to show here the long division, but actually it's just long division, the usual polynomial long division. But I don't know how to show it here in PowerPoint, so I'm going to skip that. And hopefully you won't find that very hard. But I'm going to go to the remainder. So after you do that long division, you will see the remainder is actually of this form. b minus 5a plus 4 times x minus 3 times a plus 3. Now, what this tells us is that if we do this division, regardless of the value of our x, this should hold, this identity should hold whatever the value of x is. And so what that actually means is that we want to compare only the coefficients because we should ignore x because whatever value of x, the whole thing should still work. So if we compare the coefficients, the coefficient here for the constant term is this, and the coefficient here for the constant term is zero. 
Now here, the coefficient for the x term is this. And here, the coefficient of the x term is again 0. So basically, on the left side, we, we, we have 0x plus 0. And now that gives us two equations. This equals 0, and this equals 0. And so if we solve this first one, we see that a equals negative 3. And now because we already have negative 3, we can plug it in here to solve for the second one. And if we do that, we get b equals 11. And in fact, this is the answer that we're looking for. Now for the, for the easier solution, I think is an easier solution, we do not have to do this division. The reason why I actually try to find a different solution, so this is the standard solution. You will find this in textbooks. But um, I thought I did not like the long division because it's prone to error. So I kind of had to find another way. And I discovered that the calculus solution would get rid of the division bit. And I think it's just less likely to, to do an error, to do a mistake there. So for the calculus solution, we actually make use of, of this that if we know that g of a is a root, or rather if a is a root of g of x, meaning if g of a equals 0, in this case, if we have a equals 1, that makes the 0, then we also have f of a equals 0. So the way we use this is that is as follows. f of 1, because we know that 1 makes this 0, we know that 1 is a root of g of x because g of 1 equals 0. So f of 1 according to this, must also be 0. Furthermore, we can also use this. So if we plug in 1 here, and plug in 1 in everything, we should also get something else, which is 1 plus a, a, b minus 6, which if we simplify becomes 2a plus b minus 5. However, we know that f of 1 equals 0, and we know that f of 1 equals this. So our first equation would just be 0 equals this. So here we just wrote what we learned. That's the equation, the first equation. Now we need the second equation. Normally, if we had a g of x that is not repeated, so in this case we have a repeated g of x, so x minus 1 times x minus 1. If we had a different g of x, like x minus 1 times x minus 2, for example, then we can use again this bit here. And we will find another equation. So we, we plug in the other, the other root here and plug in the other root here. And then we have 0 equals whatever is the, the expression we obtain here. But if we have a repeated root like this, we cannot do that because we only have one root. So we only get one equation. So my idea is to actually get the derivative. And if we get the derivative of, of, this, of this equation here, if we get the derivative, we find we get a new equation that should still hold. So let's do that. So if we get the derivative of this, we get f of x, f prime of x on the left. And on the right, we get q prime of x times x minus 1 squared, so that's just our g of x, and times q of x times the derivative of the g of x. Derivative of this is just 2 times x minus 1. Now, this is just a product rule in calculus. And now, the nice thing about this is we can still plug in 1 in here and still get 0. So if we do that, f prime of x first here what i did here so the first one here is just differentiation of this the second one here is a differentiation of this so if you do f prime x here we get this expression so 4x cubed 3ax squared 2ax plus b and now these are both f prime x so we can equate them and again i've already said that this will become 0 if we plug in 1. So if we plug in 1 for x, we get 0 equals f prime of 1. So we plug in 1 here, 1, 1, 1, so 0, 0. 
that's the first bit. The second bit is when we plug in one here. So we get four, three A, two A plus B. And again, if we simplify this, we get five A plus B plus four. And so we get zero equals this. So here we have our two equations. We just need to solve them. And what I do is I just subtract the, the second equation from the first. So we get 2a minus 5a, so it's negative 3a. b minus b is 0. Negative 5 minus 4 is negative 9. So we get a equals negative 3. And then we just plug in this negative 3 in the first equation. And that's what I did here. And so we get b equals 11. And this, this is, again, the same as what we got earlier. If you learned something new today, please help my channel by clicking the subscribe button and the bell for the notifications. See ya!